Identify the symmetrical interval that includes 95% of the sample means for a population with a mean equal to 45 and a standard deviation equal to 7 using a sample size of 49. So let's look at what we're doing here. So the central limit theorem if you're wanting to know 95% of the interval, okay, so that would be from here to here around the mean. Now the mean for our sample is, uh, or for our population is 45. So here is 45. So we want to know what upper value of X and what lower value of X is associated with that. Well, first of all, how did they come up with that z-score? We have to have the z-score in order to figure out what the x values are going to be. We know that the probability um, is 95%. So how did they come up with that? Well, if we want to look up the z-value, um, for we can do this more than one way but what I would say is 95% there is 5% that is not going to be included and if it's symmetrical there's going to be 2.5% on each side so that is 0 0.025 so 0 0.025 on the left side would give us our left Z value, or what we could do to find our right Z value is do all the way up to that, which would be 0.95 plus 0.025. So that probability would be 0.975. Um, let's look up 0.975 and find the z-score associated with that probability. So remember how we did the inverse? I believe it is, yeah, this one, norm.s.inverse. So let's just do um, 0 0.025. That's going to give me the value of the left z. But if we're looking for an interval, it's going to be symmetric. So um, our left Z is negative 1.96. Now let's just see if we get positive 1.96 for the uh, Z value to the right. So if we go back to our formula, and this time we want to know the Z value associated with a 0.975 probability, we're going to get 1.96. So the Z value associated with both uh, for a 95% confidence interval is going to be negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. So that's probably the hardest part. Now we have to plug it in to our formula. which we have it right here. So let's figure out our interval, the upper interval and the lower interval is going to equal the mean, remember the mean of the sample means? Well the mean of the sample means is going to be the same as the population mean because the sample size is greater than 30 or equal to 30 because our sample size is 49. So 45 is our number and we're going to do plus and minus Z which we know to be 1.96 and minus 1.96. Okay and then we have to find the standard error of the mean. Remember standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Our standard deviation here is 
uh, 7 and n is 49. So 7 divided by the square root of 49. So 7 uh, divided by 7 is going to be 1. So we're going to do uh, 45 plus 1.96 and 45 minus 1.96 times 1. So this would be 46.96 and this would be 43.04. So let's look at this. Um, here is our mean and then the upper limit would be uh, 46.96 and the lower limit would be 40 I can't remember 43.04 so we just say it we are saying that 95% of the sample means will fall within the interval of 43.04 to 46.96 so take your time on this. Um, you can technically memorize the Z value associated with a 95% confidence interval is 1.96. Um, I do, I will put somewhere the Z values for 95 and there's several of them that I have in a table somewhere that I'll share with you and put in this module. But let me know if you have any questions about this problem.